Welcome to the End Time Revolution. Broadcasting worldwide on a mission to unite born-again servants to find the army of Elijah's preparing to face Antichrist to witness before all, come what may. This is Wings of the Eagle Radio. Welcome back, my friends. Wings of the Eagle Radio is on the air live around the world. And this is Christopher Manti, your humble host of the program. And I, as always, I'm so delighted to be able to do this that um, God would provide this medium and this opportunity uh, for me to do what I love and also to serve him and to reach the body of Christ around the world and to reach, hopefully, the lost as well with the gospel and um, to increase the kingdom of God and to um, come into maturity as the body of Christ and all that good stuff because we are in the last days how far along until the Lord comes we're not sure um, but the the Holy Spirit f- definitely is working on many of us uh, impressing upon us how urgent the time is to understand it, and that it's not okay to ignore it anymore. That it's not okay to uh, dismiss it and to say it's a peripheral issue, or to say, "Well, you believe that, and I believe that, and that's fine." In the end, it's just not good enough, um, not adequate, and it's not God's heart. So, <clears throat> um. We always want to follow the Spirit. That's what we're supposed to do, right? Not really controversial about that. Um, But anyway, uh, as always, I'm just just truly honored and uh, blessed, really, uh, to be able to do this at all, whether anyone listens or not. I don't really... I don't want to say I don't care. (laughs) I don't want to spin spin my wheels here, but um, I don't really. Uh, If folks do, great. And they do. Some do. And some even interact with us here, and I wish you would do so as well if you are in the app. uh, Wings of the Eagle uh, radio app or the Spreaker version. Um, Please let me know you're out there. Just say hello in in the chat box. Uh, Or if you'd like to call... We should have it working where uh, this phone number will get right to the radio program here. 740-337-4774. 740-337-4774. Um, and so join me, okay? Let me know you're out there. Again, we have I know we have many friends who listen live and those who don't. Those who are uh, listening later on demand throughout the week, either through us directly or the Omega Radio Network, which I really love and um, super thankful to my brother, Vincent Xavier, Pastor Vincent, uh, for creating that Omega Radio Network, and he's going to be expanding that very soon, and that should be very exciting. Um, So however you are getting us, welcome. And if you're not live, sorry, no interaction for you, but uh, you're surely welcome here. And if you want to know more about what we're doing, please go to wingsoftheeagle.com. A good rundown of everything is there. Tons and tons and tons and tons, hours and hours and hours of free materials, uh, free Bible studies, blogs, videos, teachings, uh, encouragements, um, you know, and then if you throw in like our Facebook page and YouTube channel and Instagram and all that, you have tons of stuff to share with your friends. Okay, P- memes and and um, uh, different photos and and um, different 
uh, pastors and teachers who are uh, doing this thing here together um, who are worth your time. So thank you and continue to utilize that, please. And we do have several courses that we have created. Highly encourage you to take them. Um, there's there's three that we're offering right now. Uh, one is completely free called Ten Signs of Jesus is Near. So go to tensignsofjesus.com. And it'll direct you right towards the course and what's in it, and the endorsements of it, and so forth. It's been tremendous. We have literally hundreds of students from all over the world enrolled in it right now. And so we want to um, count you among them, all right? And you can interact also with the course. It's not something you have to set aside a day or time for specifically. It's all pre-recorded for you. You can take it whenever you want, however many times you want, Um and share it with whoever you want, all right? It's totally on demand. So please sign up for that uh, as well. We have uh, one, my good friend uh, Dana Crosby has put one on uh, as well for, uh, for a small fee called What Your Pastor Never Told You About the Book of Revelation, which is super cool and it's great. It goes through step-by-step, step. Um, really great education. And then the largest course we offer is right now it's over 20 hours long and it's going to end up being longer eventually and you'll get it if you sign up for it it's called en times for beginners go to en times for beginners.com and again you will see all the description a little bit about myself as the teacher uh, but also the endorsements from guys like joel richardson and jake mccandless and my own pastor randy scott so people who know uh, me personally, and who have taken the course and who just are endorsing it like crazy because it's good. That's them talking. So please sign up for that as well. It's well, well worth it. It's, I mean, guys who have been pastors have told me that you don't get this in seminary. You don't get nearly this much of education in the end time stuff. It's not even close. So, you know, you price out what a, even one semester of seminary is worth, and then you'll see. That course is well worth it. Um, so uh, I encourage you to do that and take advantage, okay, if you enjoy what we do here. Um, what I want to uh, hit on today in our time together is the free speech uh, versus the gospel. Th this is one of those things where to me it's super clear, but to most believers it's not it's very muddy and muddled, um, and we want to um, we want to be sure. I think that we get this right because it's really, really, really important. And even like Jesus would say, well, and the scriptures say, they they honor me with their mouth, but with their heart they're far from me. Um, so we don't want to fall in that category, right? With that into that camp, I certainly don't. But you can. And that, that's part of the problem is you. Uh, many folks think that once you are a believer, once you become a Christian, that you can't possibly mess up. You can't possibly not only mess up but fall away. That's that's not true. You can't possibly turn your back on Jesus. Yes, you can. You can't deny him. Yeah, sure, you can. And you will. Many will. He, that's a promise from God. Um, and this is part of it, too. Uh, he says, Lord, but Lord, Lord, we've done all these things in your name. We've First of all, who would call Jesus Lord except for a Christian? Nobody. So when he talks about that, he's talking about you. Potentially you. Us. Right? He said, Lord, we've cast out demons in your name. When have we, you know, all these things. He said, and he'll say, get away from me. I never knew you. That's sobering, is it not? So, uh, this is all on that same um, continuum. This road that we would go down. You honor him with your lips, but your heart is far from him. I think part of that is this debate or confusion about free speech versus the gospel. What do I mean by that? I live in America. 
okay, I'm an American. I'm proud to be an American. Um, I love this nation. I tried for years to change it and improve it through politics, through volunteering for helping candidates, for getting Christian men and women elected, and so forth. I thought that was what I was here to do. Well, it wasn't. And it's not yours either. Uh, Our calling is really simple and specific. Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Then all those things will be added into you. Um, as as Americans, through for many many reasons over the centuries now, we're two hundred plus two hundred fifty years old here. Um, we've become extremely self centered in every way. Um, and that's not really criticism, other than just a fact. Most Americans don't know the world exists. They don't. They can't identify other countries on a map. Um, they don't know that there are other ways to do things. They don't know there are other um, cultures. Even I mean, that's gets getting better. It's kind of being f- forced upon us, uh, multiculturalism. But um, if, if if it doesn't affect you or your family, you don't care about it. That's the problem. And so that's clearly not the gospel. Um, so, you know, this free speech thing, it's certainly not in the Bible. I hope you know that. Um, there is no requirement. There is no condition. There is no, uh, Jesus said, spread the gospel to the every creature to the ends of the earth unless you don't have free speech. Unless your government guarantees you can say it. Did, he, did, did that ever come out of his? No. You know, <laughs> of course not. In fact, you're promised the opposite. You're promised opposition, persecution, people hating you for the gospel. For the gospel. That's the point. You're not just hated because you do dumb things in your life or... Um, or you're a hateful person, or you you're you're a criminal. I mean, that's not what Jesus is talking about, obviously. <sighs> anyway, so we're very extremely self centered here in America, and part of the um, deception of that is to thinking that free speech or the even the constitution and I'm not going to get into that here but um you know our laws great as they are 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 made into an idol that the gospel takes a back seat to upholding the constitution which is stu- I mean ridiculous that's clear idolatry I don't care how good it is if it's not god it's an idol Period. So, uh, things that are amorphous, that have no um, real form, like freedom, quote, freedom. Freedom to do what? To sin? And we're told specifically not to do that. Don't use your freedom as an excuse to sin. Well, that's exactly what America has done. That's exactly what all nations have done. Whenever there's freedom exercise, usually it's not to serve God. (laughs) To serve their bellies. Or their emotions. Or their greed. It's just a fact. So, um, part of that is, and this is a European ideal too, because, you know, you can't really deny, yes, we're a big melting pot for all nations here in America, but it's a European creation. Okay? The first settlers and all that, and they all came from Europe, we know that. So this, these ideals of freedom and democracy and free speech are European in, um, in Genesis. You know, they, they formulize them. Anyway, so but now 2018 is here and we've got many, 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 many things going on. 
And you can take any example you want. It, you can be holy or profane. Um, it's Roseanne Barr or Tommy Robinson um, or your stance on guns or abortion. I mean, pick your thing. And it basically comes down to free speech at some point, right? Either you're allowed to say it or you're punished for saying it. Um, and so that's, that's you know, not invalid. I mean, that's not a bad thing to want to, f- want to contend for. To contend for the right to you know to to not be shut down and and um, certainly if it's that's the point of all this is is it the gospel or not because we have a lot of secularism um, kind of melted into our Christianity here in America. Um, and uh, in the West, generally, it's always like something that sounds biblical, but it's not. Um, like I will, I may not agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. That's clearly not in the Bible. Uh, not that it's bad. I think it's nice, but that's not our aim. And you'd say, wait a minute, brother. It's why freedom of speech is important because it's easier to spread the gospel that way. Well, I'll agree it's easier. It's clear that it's easier. I mean, the, you've seen the fruit of it, um, again, here in the United States, where there's a church on every corner. And that's an old expression, but it's very true. I can walk out my door... In five miles, there's at least ten churches. Probably more. I'm sure there are more. J- just, I mean, of every denomination. I go to the only non-denominational one that I know of. Um, and we're, in my humble opinion, the, the greatest church around. But I, I really don't think that. In fact, I've never said that. Um, but it's where God has me. And um, it's not tied to denominational funny business, which is important to me personally. But anyways, um, you have the choice. You have choice after choice upon choice upon option after option. That's how, you know, that's freedom of speech. That's You can get any church you want and non-Christian religions. We have mosques in our area. And this is not a, this is not known as a Muslim area. But there's one right down the street, and it's packed today. Fridays, it's it's packed. Um, and they, they, are they immigrants there? Nope. I mean, I'm sure there are some, but most are not. Anyways, again, not the point. Um, so there's freedom to do that, and these free speech has allowed many churches to come up. But, however, it also has the opposite effect at the same time. Secularism, other religions, false religions, false doctrines, um, anti-God stuff, anti-Christ stuff, hateful stuff. And again, it's that's fine. I mean, that is that's what your that's where your culture is, and that's what you're going to get. But that's not the gospel. What is your aim? What is your goal as a believer? What should you be striving for? Do I? Does it bother me that Tommy Robinson is in jail? Of course, yeah, it does. I mean, that's you know Roseanne and all that. That's I don't really care. TV shows and, and Hollywood can go to hell, honestly. Um, don't care. Is there, there's no Jesus glorification going on there at all. 
Um, the Tommy Robinson thing, okay? So, yeah, it bugs me a lot that that happens in a supposedly free society. Well, first of all, that makes me say, hey, guys, you don't live where you think you live. And this is where, um, this is exactly what God said to me in 2012. When the elections went total bonkers um, for where I thought we were as a people. We didn't want what I thought we wanted. What my side of things said were important. They weren't important. And they're not. I don't care if Donald Trump is in, uh, is uh, got elected. It doesn't mean we get to assign all our uh, hopes and dreams and or things that we think he was elected for. He was elected because... Uh, Hillary Clinton was the worst candidate in the history of America. The worst. The worst. To, I mean, I know history a little bit, and I followed politics my whole life, and there is nobody worse than her. Nobody. It was a joke. And he almost lost to her. Okay, so let's. I, this has nothing to do with uh, Donald Trump or anything else, but I'm just saying the reason why he won is because she was the opponent. Not some grand uh, desire to bring free speech back. <sighs> so, anyways, um, what's the what's the point? Okay, what is the goal? What is the goal of what we're doing here? So, when we get back, I'll um, give you the info on that. All right, what I think we should be doing. Be right back. Broadcasting around the world. All around the world. We're available at the App Store and on Google Play. Download now for free. Anywhere, anytime. It's that easy. Thanks for listening. And now, Wings of the Eagle Radio. Taking the light to the gathering darkness, this is Wings of the Eagle Radio. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. This is Wings of the Eagle Radio. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, 
Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, All right, Wings of the Eagle Radio here. Christopher Manti back with you. Please let me know you're out there. As uh, Brother Randy has done, welcome, my friend. Good morning to you. Just such a pleasure to be able to do this as always. 740-337-4774. If you uh, feel like calling, but let me know you're out there and chat as well. That is fine. Fine, fine, fine. All right, so... <clears throat> What's the bottom line of all this is what is our motivation? What is our aim? It's fine. It's well and good to have free speech. But here's the thing. Um, were, was there free speech in ancient Rome? Was there free and open expression uh, when you got thrown to the lions? And how did the gospel do during that time? All right. Uh, was there uh, free speech in China in the 80s and 90s when the church there was the most explosive in size in the earth? Hmm? How was that going? How was the free speech in the Soviet Union and the communist countries when the gospel was spread and that system was brought down? How, how did that go? How, how is free speech in Egypt these days? How, how is it that Millions of Coptic Christians endure year after year after year with no free speech. Um, how's your free speech in Iran? Hmm? Because the fastest growing church by far in the world is in Iran. How is that possible if there's no free speech? So tell me again why I should want free speech. Because it seems to me that when you get it, even though we have it today or we don't have it, I don't know exactly how much of it we have in reality, but it seems to me that when you get it, the gospel goes away. It seems to me when you don't have it, the kingdom advances because you're forced to to choose what do you really serve here what do you really believe is this jesus thing important enough to you to die for or to suffer for because here you don't have to make that choice you can you can go you find your even if you believe in jesus and the cross and and all that stuff and all that theological stuff is sound and you're good with that but you want to you don't like certain parts of it, or you don't like when churches talk about sin or hell or the exclusivity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, he's the only way. You don't like all that stuff, or you don't. You want more of a social justice church. You can have your pick. 
You have a buffet table of easy believism to go find. Go pick one. You don't like this one? Go to that one. That's not the Bible. That's not scriptural. There was a church in a town. That all believers went to a central location. That's the church, which is the believers, met in a place. That was it. Great. Praise God that there are so many believers that we need more than one place to meet. Then you have, that is why you had more than one church location in a city. Not because you disagreed. Not because you had different doctrines. Not because uh, you didn't believe abortion was wrong. Not because you you believe homosexuality is cool with Jesus. Not because uh, you believe Islam should be included and we're all one religion. We serve one God. None of that. That's crazy. It's crazy talk. That's not the way the Bible says we should do this. We have a thousand churches in America and the West because we don't want to be bothered with sticking together. A family takes work, right? You don't always get along with your relatives. I know I don't. But they're still the family. We are the family of God. If you are saved, if the blood of Jesus has washed over you and you have repented of your sin and you are now in the family of God, we are brothers. Do with all the respect that comes with that. In the book of Hebrews, we even say, you know, everyone knows that part about the uh, be sure to entertain strangers. You don't know if an angel is there or if that's an angel you're entertaining. But the point is, and 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 even Jesus would say, you know, don't don't insult these little ones, little what believers, Christians other believers, don't insult them because their angel has the face of their father in heaven at all times. So God is alerted when you diss one of his children. I I don't want that on me. Now we're supposed to be truthful, teach uh, the truth with love, uh, the the whole counsel of God. I mean, that's where, that's me, okay? And pretty soon here, I'm going to be uh, ordained by my local congregation as a pastor, and that's just unbelievable to me. But um, this is the work that God has for me. And we're planting a church that has the potential to be just a massive, massive thing. Um, so I'm, I'm all in. Uh, but at the same time, we are all brothers and sisters. All right, so... What's what's the point of that? The gospel is the point, right? The saving souls is the point. Expanding the kingdom of God is the point. Whether you have free speech or not doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So don't fight for it. If you have it, great. But if you don't have it, great. So what? That's not. A, that's not. A, it has nothing to do with your calling. It has nothing to do with what you're supposed to do as a belief as. All believers, all believers. Well, I'm not, I'm not called to be an evangelist. You see, uh, yeah, yeah, you kind of are. Um, it doesn't mean it's your full time thing. Okay, we all have our talents. We all have, you know, if you're a big e evangelist like a Billy Graham, that's what you do all the time. That's your calling from God. That's your gifting from God. You will bring souls into the kingdom wherever you go. That's just what you do. But we're all called to tell people about Jesus, right? And to say that they need to be saved. That God is real, he loves them, and he sent his son down to die in your place, and he rose three days later, and he's coming again. That's the gospel. And he's born of a virgin. Forgot that part. So, that's it. You got the gospel in ten seconds.
and and okay, great, you have that, you believe it. What are you, what are you doing with it? What parable of the talents? What are you what are you doing here? And uh, oh, okay, we got some brothers here chiming in. Yeah, Randy says the word, the word. They've gotten away from the word. I mean, that's that's why it's there, right? And Roland even yeah, Second Second Timothy four, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Everyone loves all that, but wait, long suffering. <laughs> wait a minute, what? That means suffer a long time. <laughs> That means wait a long time for fruit. Um, and be ready in season, out of season. Okay, whether you're, um, think you're ready or not. Uh, whether Well, I can only preach if I'm at church on Sunday. Or I can only listen to the word if I'm at church on Sunday. Or, um, you know, oh, I'm out shopping at the, at the grocery store. Don't bother me. You know, don't bug me with this gospel stuff. That's personal. <laughs> you got to listen to the Holy Spirit. If you're a believer, he's supposed to direct your step. And yep, you, sometimes you'll... Uh, and sometimes it's you think it's insignificant things. But just listen. Um, and you're going to do what... You're going to win souls at some point. So just keep doing it. Even when you don't think you're ready. That's what out of season is. Be ready to provide the witness and that testimony at all times. Don't prepare it and write it down on a piece of paper and think you're going to have to give it a specific day and time and that's it. We're supposed to live that way. We're supposed to, our bodies are a living sacrifice. Anyway. Um, Okay, so bottom line is, all I know is the gospel advances the fastest when there is restriction on speech. And there's some kind of heavenly equation there. Spiritual reality. That when you actually have the freedom to do it, you get lazy. Because that means you have the freedom not to do it. Especially here, church on every corner. ah, There's no need anymore. Some, you know, some the big denominations don't even see a need for evangelism. You don't even worry about the gospel. It's, it is what it is. Well. Point is, and this is just my opinion. This is everything you hear here. Unless I'm quoting something. Don't chase after free speech. It's not worth it. You're wasting your time. Even if you could get it, which we won't anymore, it's over, okay? The, the Tommy Robinson thing has demonstrated that. There's, there, there is no freedom of speech. Whatever, whatever government you're under is going to do what they're going to do. I don't care what leaders are in office. It doesn't mean anything. Don't be deceived. Don't put your trust in princes. Don't put your trust in man. It will fail. They will fail you. Haven't we learned by this time? <sighs> so, free speech is well and good. But don't chase it. Don't aim for it. Don't worry about it. Advance the gospel. Like, if, if someone puts a camera in my face, and I tell it to folks all the time, the first thing out will be John fourteen six. It's not about the freedom to say it. It's about saying it. Be about the Father's business. The governments of man are what give you, quote-unquote, free speech to say what you want. I don't care about the governments of man. God doesn't either. I mean, it's not to say you disobey or you're not under authority in certain things. That's not what I mean. I mean, you preach the gospel no matter what. 
So don't wait for there to be free speech for you to do that. Don't only be in places where you're free to do it, because that that's not really showing God a lot. <laughs> right? Even says, oh, what, what credit is that to you if you only love those who love you? You're supposed to love those who hate you. Give the truth to those who deny it. Save the lost. Don't keep saving the saved. So, obviously, there are a lot of moving parts to this this Christian life that we're in. And hopefully you're in it. I get it, okay? This is not the, the everything in our life. But with so much in the... Um, media world, okay, the things that we're paying attention to, it's so easy to get tricked into thinking the Christian's job is to care about free speech or to secure free speech. It's not. And of all those um, examples he offered earlier, when free speech is restricted, the gospel goes forth just fine. In fact, it goes forth better more effectively and you have more solid disciples come out of it than with free speech because there's a cost they count the cost we don't count the cost we th- you know we think if someone says a, a, we got fired from a job or we can't be, uh, um, you know if a baker gets in trouble for not baking a cake the right way that that's persecution it's not Let's be about the business of the gospel. Let's concentrate on that. Let's make that our goal. Let's make that our aim. Let's make that the important thing. Because it's the only thing. This world is dying. It's going away. The system, the governments of this world are all going away. By the way, and why will it go away? Because King Jesus is coming. And what does it say in the Psalms that he will do? He will execute kings on the day of his wrath. He's not going to promote Donald Trump or any other leader that you think should be there. They're all gone. All governments are gone, brought under the lordship of the king. And by the way, what does it say? Does it say he rules with a democratic system? Does it say he rules with a, the vote? Does it say he rules with by popular opinion? No, it's his rod of iron. That's a dictator. Yep. That's what we're getting. If you if you think fighting dictatorships is a holy job, think twice about it. And again, not to say anything uh positive about evil or or dictators, but let's be honest. The millennium, the kingdom of Jesus that we're all waiting for, that we're all with the age to come and all the things when this world goes away and injustice and, and violence and hate and all that stuff is done away with, it's a dictatorship that we're going into. You think there'll be free speech there? I don't know. I don't know, but I know it's up to the king and not up to me and or you. That's the thing with the king. Uh, he's all powerful, and no one questions his authority. Does that sound like something you want to live under? Because the American way is no, I'm never living under that. I'm never, no one's ever taken my freedom away. No one's ever taken my speech away. No one's ever taken my guns away. No one's ever taken my anything. Ah, uh, me, 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 me. Self sufficient. Well, that's not the millennium, friend. (sighs) Rod of iron. Rod of iron. Concentrate. You know, pray about that. Meditate on it. What do you think that means? He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a kingdom. It's a dictatorship. King's word goes. 
Are you on board or not? His righteousness and his justice. It doesn't mean it's... We know Jesus. We we should know his character. We should know his long-suffering, his kindness, his extreme grace and love and brotherhood. Because he's, he's gone through all this stuff that we're going through. Um... So, and all that. It's not a character issue. But you're supposed to give things up. You're supposed to surrender. You're supposed to say, not my will, Lord, but yours. So, that is the bottom line of that. That is why free speech shouldn't matter to you. And you shouldn't fight for it. Don't worry about it. Just say what you gotta say. Deliver the witness. Uh, Like uh, Roland uh, excellently has put in here in Matthew 10. When they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. It will be given to you in that hour. Where you should speak, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your father who speaks in you. So, again, don't worry about it. What, what you have to say will come out. And by the way, it says when they deliver you up, deliver you up to what? To the powerful people, to the councils, to the judges, to the kings, to the leaders, the world leaders, religious leaders, public trials, things like that. So that's not going to be, free, you know what I mean? This is not a, a freewheeling situation. You're under arrest. You're in court, basically, in that scene. So that can't be your motivation. Don't fight for free speech because the devil's in there. The devil's not in the gospel. The devil's in free speech. Yes. And the kingdom we're praying for, if you say the Our Father, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come so your will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom, you're praying for the kingdom to come to the earth. And when the kingdom does come to the earth and the prayer will be answered, it'll be a dictatorship. Where your freedom is gone. <laughs> Now, there's a freedom in Christ, okay, we get that. There's certain th- there are fruits of the Spirit, and you're free in those things. But it's not everything. You're not free to sin. You're not free to talk back to the Lord, right? You're not free to give uh, do an alternate plan. So, right, like my brothers are saying here who are on the program with us chiming in be ready at any time to give an answer to give account for the spirit that's in you for the hope that is in you so don't fight for free speech Fight for the gospel. Contend for the faith, not for laws. Our enemy is in free speech. Freedom, free elections. Because the heart is deceitful above all things. So lean into your Father, to the Son, to the Spirit that's in you. I hope He's in you. If not, get Him there. (laughs) Repent, repent, repent of your sins. Say, God, I need you. Jesus, I'll follow you. And then follow Him. 
He'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you how to follow. It's written, and, and the Spirit will tell you that's, that's his agency. That's his purpose. Reveal the will of the Father to the church, to you, to me. So get into that. Um, just one little nugget here before I go. And that is, if you're following, um, every year there's a, what's called Christ at the Checkpoint, which is a Palestinian Christian, and yes, there are such things, Palestinian Christians, um, a Palestinian Christian group is an organization that is extremely hateful towards Israel, and, um, And so they they spread lots of lots of lies, um, like Jesus was a Palestinian, or they were refugees. I mean, it's just stupidity. Um, But the Christians there in Israel, in the land, not the Messianic Jews, but the Arab Christians, mostly these Palestinian Christians, um, a lot of them are just flat out deceived, at least, and hateful that they're not doing things Christ's way at all. Um, and so fi- they never, hardly ever have any kind of condescending, or not condescending, uh, uh, con- contrary views presented. They have speakers who agree with them and that's it. Um, they finally opened up this year, just yesterday, to Michael Brown. And um, Dr. Brown is, I'm a huge fan of the guy. He just... Wonderful man, wonderful brother. Um, he does. I kind of do want to do what he wants to do. I mean, you know, he's on the radio all the time. Uh, he's giving you know scholarly defenses of things, and he's on the charismatic side, and that's cool. So um, he finally got to speak at this Christ at the Checkpoint event yesterday. Uh, it's near Bethlehem. They hold it. Um, but again, w- this is what is free speech getting you here? Uh, free speech gets you hatred of Israel. Um, not God's plan. There is no difference a lot of the times with these Palestinian Christians and the Palestinian Muslims. In fact, it's so there's so much agreement in their hatred of Israel that they get together for a lot of these things. The Palestinian Authority, the Muslims in control, have partnerships with the Christian churches because they have a common enemy. And that's exactly how they view it. Boycott Israel. Uh say they're occupiers, uh, uh, fight against anything that the Israeli government would do to um, assert their sovereignty. They they bind this lie about the Palestinian people themselves. There is no Palestinian people. You're an Arab, you're a Jew, you're, you're some other ethnic group, and you happen to live there. That's it. Anyways, enough of that. Um, so, be encouraged that this this Christian Zionism, quote unquote, is the right thing. And it's, it's, don't be ashamed of that. And. Um, because we're here to witness to the lost, yes. And in the end times, if this thing really comes down to it and we're really getting close to the return of Jesus and the tribulation begins, we're here to witness to Israel, to bring them into the kingdom, to protect the Jewish people, because Satan hates them. Yes, he hates you, but there's no national promise to America. 
There's no national promise to any nation on earth except for Israel. Period. That's why God loves it. That's why Satan hates it. And that's why he's trying to deceive you into not caring about it or being against it. So there's a bigger, much, much, much bigger fish to fry, friend, than free speech. It's the gospel. Another good point. Don't We cannot be protesters. We have to be proclaimers. Uh, Romans 10, 13, 14. Yep, 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 yep. Right, right, right. We can't be protesting anything, okay? Be about the business of the Father. All right, that's it. I'm done. I love you guys. Thank you so much for, as always, being with me. And hopefully we've uh, done some good here. If we have ministered to you, please consider ministering to us and supporting us financially. Go to wingsoftheeagle.com slash donate to be able to bring these things to you. They cost money. They cost time and sweat. So uh, please continue to do that and uh, pray about it and tell your friends. And again, um, be in prayer if you can for myself, for my family, for Jake McCandless, uh, the author of Spiritual Prepper and the head of Stand for Ministries. He and, I, and his family, he and I are launching out into um, a new church plant, but it's online. It's called End Time Church, dot church for more information please go there and you'll be hearing more in the coming weeks about that so um i cover your prayers i thank you for your fellowship and for your love and support and um we love you right back is there anything we can do for you email us radio at wings of the ego.com or reach out on social media twitter facebook instagram youtube etc 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 okay and my friends, it's getting time here. Time is getting short. So let's be about the business of the Lord. All right? Love you. Until we speak again. Until next time, pray always. Meet with others who know what's coming. Join the free network at wingsoftheeagle.com and spread the word. The destiny of the final generation of the saints of God draws near.